Witness for Common Ground 2022. Sponsored by Broadway Church of Christ and Full Armor Ministries. Common Ground is an aspiring evening of music and worship featuring multiple artists, including Carolyn Trailer. There's a story behind my praise. One City Worship. Russell White. And more. It all happens Sunday evening, October 16th at 6.30 at Broadway Church of Christ. Admission is free and a love offering will be taken to aid in the efforts to rebuild Full Armor Ministries church facility that was damaged by recent winter storms and hateful vandalism. This is an event you don't want to miss. Come join us Sunday, October 16th on Common Ground. Man, let me invite you one more time to come to Common Ground tonight at 6.30 at Broadway Church of Christ here in Lubbock, Texas. Come, I don't care how you have to get here, man. You are going to be in for a treat. Uh, this is a uh, uh, collaborative effort that is by Full Armor and uh, Broadway Church of Christ. Uh, that we have come together on a common ground to do something wonderful for the community, to give to the community a, a night of just pure gospel in all different genres. So let's come out and, and enjoy yourself. If you're in the outskirts of Lubbock and you, you want to get here, please, by all means, come. However you got to get here, if you got to come on a skateboard, if you have to come on a bicycle, if you just got to walk over here, just uh, get in your car. Man, wherever you're around in these surrounding towns, like Lorenzo, Crosbyton, Rawls, all the places where I grew up, you know, and when I finally landed in Lubbock, I got Lubbock friends, and then I got Plainview friends. I married into Plainview. So, I mean, all you from Plainview, from um, Crosbyton, Lorenzo, Idaho, where I was born, and then all the way to Slayton, you know, Post, you know, all the way to Brownfield, you know, the Terry County area. Just get here, get here, and you shall be blessed. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in today to this program, and uh, we're going to let you know that you have an opportunity to be blessed by this ministry. God bless you. Now let's get into today's message. What prayer is and what prayer is not. This is what the message is today. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I just um, pray for the manifestation of your presence upon your word and we realize that it's not by what a man possesses that makes him uh, who he is or who he will be. But, Father, it's by your spirit. Your spirit that dwells in us is the most real thing about us. So, Father, let the words that are being spoken today be filled with faith and wisdom and knowledge and understanding so that we might know how to live this life better and to please you more uh, than we please ourselves. So this word is for us today, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now get your Bibles out, and please like and share this. Uh, if you would like to uh, share this, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, also, just look on the uh, uh, website, famtext.org. Uh, go to uh, the different genres of where you can reach us and just let us know how we're doing. And if you're looking at it on Facebook today, I want you to get a pen and piece of paper or just get ready to go in this timeline and we're going to give to you what prayer is 
and what prayer is not. This is coming out of Matthew chapter 6, verses uh, 5 and 6. Here we go. It says this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. And when thou hast prayed, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love praying, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they might be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and the Father which sees in secret shall reward thee openly. Now, God is, is talking about a dialogue between he and his people. And he's not talking about a monologue. Most time when people pray, they go into this long drawn out thing about what they need, what they want, what they desire, and they never really give God an opportunity to flood their life with his presence, his word, and his power. And uh, it becomes a, a sideshow or what Jesus declared as hypocritical. Hypocritical um, stance and the way a person lives and the way a person is, it is only by how that person ends up putting on a mask and he's in a, he's in a charade, he's in a, uh, a show and he's giving off this show of who and what he is or her she is by, by masking up and being something that they're not. This is what God is telling us that prayer is not. Prayer is not hypocritical. Prayer does never, um, it, it will never be to an on individual's taste. It will always be a thing to where that you seek God and to know the difference because it takes discipline. It's a discipline. Let me give you what I think the prayer uh, definition is. The definition of prayer from my, my point of view. This is my point of view. This is not scripture. This is not, so don't write me letters. I know this is the way I see it. Spiritual discipline, it means that prayer is a spiritual discipline that is practiced in private, but it is rewarded by manifestations in the natural. It is what we do in our discipline in the closet of our lives. And you should have a place where in your heart or in your life or somewhere where you can be alone with God and that you could communicate with God and then he then manifests in the natural through your life. So private uh, places in your life is always going to bring about the manifestations of a reward. Uh, what does this mean? It means that God in private places will display his rewards through your life by rewarding you uh, with the things that you sometimes pray for, the things that he wants in your life. And it means that when he's rewarding you, it, it simply means that he's recognizing you. He's giving you recognitions. Um, let me give you an example. When a person goes into war, uh, that person that survives the war, they are rewarded. They're rewarded with a medal of, um, you know, that displays on their gum, with their garment, that says that they've been in a war. Uh, this war, this is the theater where they fought in. This is the war where they fought in. How many, how many badges or medals in life do you have where you survive some things? You've gone through some things because of prayer, or you 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 survive this and know that God is the one who did it for you. You look unto the hills, as the psalmist say, and you know that your help it comes from God. That the battle is not yours; it belongs to God. He has made you to be the head and not the tail. He has given you the power, not by uh, power, not by might, but it's by his spirit, says one of the prophets. And so all of these things come by praying. 
You've got to learn. And Jesus even spoke of it in the word when he talks about prayer. He says, you know, they was asking the question to Jesus one time after seeing him perform a miracle. They said, how can you do these things? Why? Why, why can't we do this? And he said, this kind only comes by fasting and praying. So whenever we, we pray, we get power. We get the, the wisdom, the understanding. We know how to pray for each other. We know how to pray in situations. We know how to pray when a person is going through some things. Here recently, we've been hit hard in my family by a lot of um, things that, that some people don't even survive over. And I mean, some people that just does not want to go on from. But prayer has sustained our lives in my family that we can continue to go on. Prayer shows up, number one. Prayer shows up in our character. It's when we are not being looked at by the public, when we're in our secret places, this is where we build character in prayer. When you pray to God, your character is being built, your personality. Every person that comes to this planet, remember this. Every person, before I go to the second one, every person in this, in this, uh, in this life comes to this earth with, uh, you know, a gift. And that gift is activated by a personality. Your personality activates the gift that's within you. And the only way you can activate it is that it's got to be done through prayer. And you've got to learn how to activate what God has given to you as your gift. And so it takes prayer to do that. And in, that's why no one can be you and no one can be me. I, I myself, I, I know me better than you know me. You know why? Because I spend time with me and my gift is only activated by my personality. So you don't have to get intimidated because somebody else does what you do or someone else has what you have because it is only activated. Your gift is only activated by your personality. Nobody can be you. Nobody is is as good as you. And I, I taught my children, I teach my family that there is no person on this earth greater than you but God. There's no person on this earth greater than you but God. And so God is giving to us through prayer a life that is filled with character. It means that he's going to put you in a place where you can maintain it, you can keep it through prayer. Those things that God give to you, you hold on to them because of prayer, and you got to keep on praying in order to hold on to those things. The next thing God will do through prayer, he'll show up in wisdom. He gives you experiences to develop your gifts, your talents, but you have to pray for wisdom. When God spoke to Solomon about what he should give him, Solomon didn't want money. He didn't want all those things. Uh, that he was later on blessed with. But what he wanted was, he wanted to know how to go in and out before the people. God, teach me to go in and out before your people with you in front of me and making yourself known to the people. If you don't go out, I don't go out. If you don't do it, I can't do it. If you won't fix it, it just can't be fixed. So this is what Solomon prayed for. And God told him, said, since you didn't ask me for the riches of this land, the wisdom for the land, he said, but you asked for the wisdom to know how to go in and out before my people. He said, I will grant you the wisdom through your experiences. And after Solomon got through experiencing life and what all life had to offer and all of the great things that happened, he understood what God says. And he looked back on it. He said, our life is but a vapor. And anyone who chooses the wisdom of this world and the pleasures of this world over all of the things that God has, I want to warn you, is vanity. It means that we're here for a moment and it's gone. And after we're gone, who's going to accumulate all of the things that we've accumulated? Who's going to enjoy them? So we might as well enjoy life and have the wisdom through the experiences. Those experiences develop you with knowledge and they give you good judgment and they have you with the qualities of being wise. It gives you the ability to be wise in your decisions.
Consequences come from the knowledge you gain in prayer. You know, so if you if you make good choices, you have good consequences. Consequences are either negative or positive. It is just a response to an action or a choice you make. If you make a good choice, then you'll have good consequences. If you make bad choices, bad consequences come with bad choices. The Bible says it plainly. It says, be not deceived. God is not mocked that whatsoever man soweth, that shall he reap. So the knowledge that you gain through prayer will give you the favor of God. Now, number three is, is key. Number three is key. Prayer shows up in our attitude. What, what kind of attitude do you have every day? You walk by somebody that says that they're a Christian and you say good morning and they look at you and they walk past you. Is that displaying the love of Christ? Or is that just, I, I understand that if you got something on your mind, but for you to look in a person's eye when they're walking by you and they're saying good morning, and you won't even respond to that, it's something wrong from your point of, with your point of view. So, so you, you're looking at things from your position and then all of a sudden, you lose where you are in your prayer life. So the point of view that we have to look at is how well are we praying? What are we praying for? What is our prayer life based on? Are we, are we just doing something to be doing it? Are we just religiously doing it? Somebody asked us to pray and you take 35 or 40 minutes to pray. That tells me you're not praying at home. If someone asks you to pray over the offering, you shouldn't go in there and start praying for worldwide peace. <laughs> Come on now. Be honest. Prayer shows up in our attitude. How can you be so hateful and you praying every day? How can you not like a person and say you've been praying? You say you've been praying and you got this attitude. And God says it very plainly through John. He said, how can you love God whom you've never seen? and then hate your brother who you see daily. He said, we do not tell the truth and we live a lie. Our attitude checks our altitude. How high do you want to go in God? If we have been lifted up with him in heavenly places according to the book of Ephesians, and we've been seated with him in heavenly places, then we've got to be praying from our position and not our conditions. Those things are key when it comes to prayer. Prayer is not taking the wrong approach to God. It is taking the right attitude toward God and saying, God, not my will, but your will be done. Number four, prayer shows up in blessings. God's favor is on your life when you have a prayer life. He strategically places you in an advantage over the world. The Bible talks about having the advantage over anything in this world when you pray because God knows where everything is in this world and he gives you that favor and he protects you. The protection of God comes because of the provision of God. The only way God is gonna protect you is that you have his provision. The provisions of God means that through prayer, he opens up to you the treasures of heaven and he gives to you the favor on your life that wherever you are and you're in life and you're doing something for him, you got to pray. Prayer is the maintenance it is the maintenance on the favor that God places in your life. 
When David says, I'll bless the Lord at all times in Psalm 34, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. He talks about going across all time zone when he said, I'll praise him at all times. How do you praise him? It is a prayer life. You praise him through your prayer life and you tell him thank you. I was always taught that when, when somebody does something nice for you, you tell them thank you. And God is constantly, every day, doing something nice for you. Oh, wait a minute. Before you say God hasn't done anything for me, who woke you up this morning? Was it your alarm clock like you think it was? Was it somebody calling your name? No, it was God who woke you up. And when he woke you up, you should have said thank you before your feet Hit the ground out of your bed. You ought to tell him thank you. Thank you for another day. And the second thing you can thank him for is that you got your right mind. There's a lot of people wake up and don't have their mind. They have the body, but they don't have their mind. So prayer can be given in Thanksgiving. You should be thankful. Don't wait to Thanksgiving to thank God. You thank God every day because you have the blessing as it shows up through your prayer life. God gives you an unfair advantage. I mean, it's unfair the way he does the devil. You know, I'm just thankful that he just tears him up every time. When you pray, God protects you. He protects you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. That's what he promised. He said, I'll never abandon you like the world does. He says that when you pray, he says, peace I give to you, not as the world give. He said, but the peace that I give you. And then he goes on, he said, joy, which brings me to the next thing, is that prayer, when you pray, showing up in your prayer is joy. There is joy in prayer. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Emotionally wholeness. In your emotions, in your will, in everything that shows up in your life, it's whole, it's complete, it's to the feel, to the overflow. It means that your well-being is first thing on God's mind. To be successful and have a future is that you've got to have joy because it is the strength of everything that is spiritual. Happiness is connected to things, but joy is solely centered in God through prayer. Man, that's, that's, let me say that again. You need to type that in the feed. You need to say amen or something to that. Is that when, you, when you're seeking God, God gives you joy to stabilize you, to centralize everything in your life, to make him the center of your life. And, you know, there's a song that, um, that uh, has been sung, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. You know, for everything that is good and perfect comes from you. You're the hope of my contentment for all the things that I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Lord, without you being in my life, I wouldn't have no joy. And you know what? That's one thing that God gives us that the world can't take it. Jesus said, I give you joy, not as the world gives. Anything the world gives, they can take back. He said, I give it to you. And he says, no man can take it from you. You have to give it away. You have to give away your joy by not praying, fretting, and threatening your own self about the things in this life. You worry about things in life. When you have joy, you overcome. Joy is a central part of overcoming. I wish I had somebody that would believe me on that. Your future is connected to the joy you have today. Man, get excited about your future. Get excited about the day. This is a joyous day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice in it. 
man, I don't want to leave that part right there because I get joy just thinking about it. Thinking about how good he's been to me, what all he's done in my life, how he's brought me out of, as the old people used to say growing up in my life, they used to say he kept me from danger seen and unseen. You know, they wake up and they're praying in the church and they pray, so Lord, I thank you that my, my bed wasn't my cooling board. My sheets wasn't my winding sheets. And then they go on and they say, I'm praying not to show to this unfriendly world. Lord, we're living in a good world, but we're amongst mean people. But God, we need you. That's what prayer is. God, we need you more than we need this stuff. We need you more than we need this stuff. So God, I'm asking in Jesus' name right now, I'm going to stop and pray right now. Father, in Jesus' name, for everything we need, you know what we need. For everything that we desire, you know what we desire because you put it in us. But God, help me with me. Help me not to be my own enemy. Help me not to trip myself up every time. Help me not to stumble over doubt and confusion. You are not the author of confusion. But God, you said that anything that pertains to godliness and in the Holy Ghost, you will give us peace. Thank you that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I give you praise for it. Amen. Prayer number six. Prayer shows up in our favor. In favor. God approves you. Uh, you know, we're at the time of voting and and everybody's got a message that they send out. And at the end of that message, somebody else talks about their message. But at the end of that message, they said, I approve of this message. God's got his word out there and he wants us to get into it. And he wants us to know that we can pray to him and we can always come to him. And then when we get into the word and we pray the word and we believe the word and we receive the word, then the manifestations of it, then God says, I approve of that message. That's what God does through prayer. He approves of what we're asking him because he says, no good father, when a child asks for bread, gives them a stone or a serpent, but he gives them what they need. And then he goes on, Jesus says, and how much more would your father love to give you the gift of his spirit to those who ask him. We simply do not have, as James said, because we ask not. We're not asking for anything. Prayer does not mean you get to cheat. You got to walk out this life. You don't get to do things without praying. You can't live this life. You can't get things out of your life without praying. Another thing is, is that private places in your life where you pray, God will give you public success. Go in your closet, shut the door on the world and pray to God and he will reward you publicly. He will publicly let people know that the, the early church had no problem because wherever they went, there were miracles, there were signs, there were wonders, there were people uh, receiving the presence of God through their lives. And then they eventually said, they have been with the Lord. You don't have to walk around and say you're a Christian when you're praying. You don't have to walk around and, and have a bumper sticker on the back of your car saying that I'm a believer in Christ. You hit my car, I will knock you out. That's not, that's not what it's all about. It's about living epistles that we become when we have a prayer life. Now, closet prayers, closet prayers are rewarded openly. That's what you got to get. Whatever you seeking God for in private, he will reward you openly. Number seven, and I'm getting close to the end here. Prayer is learned. No one starts out knowing how to pray. In Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4, 
uh, the disciples came to Jesus, and I'm just paraphrasing it for time. They came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray. So that means they didn't know how to pray, and they needed to learn how to pray. We don't know how to pray. And that's why we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, the presence of God inside us, because he knows what we have need of before we even ask. He knows what we need. And he's our intercessor. So he's going to teach us according to John chapter uh, 14 and verse 26. Jesus said that when I go away, he's going to send another comforter. And this other comforter that is coming, he's going to teach you all the things that you, Jesus, have lived, said, and done. You must not cheat. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't stand in places and public places and and show off your your prayer life and, and and you know and you're doing all these things and just showing off your prayer life. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't stand on a corner and say, "I thank God I'm not like that person over there." I thank God that I got this and they don't have anything, uh, or they're not about anything. That that church is not about anything. That place is not about anything. That person is not. You don't know what that person is. You don't know what that church is. You don't know what that people have to go through in order to have the kinds of anointing that on their life. The greater the tragedy, I believe, the greater the anointing. Some of us have to go through greater things that, that people that are not praying because we're under attack because we're trying to seek and get closer to God when we're in prayer. But when you're not praying, the devil doesn't have to mess with you because he already has you. He already has you in a frame of mind with a bad attitude and all the things that prayer is not. You're hypocritical, all of those things. He got all that wrapped up inside of you when you don't do what you're supposed to in order to maintain your life. Prayer should be like Daniel was. Daniel, when he knew that there was a decree signed on his, on his prayer life and he knew that there was a common enemy and the enemy said, you know what, we're going to trap Daniel, we're going to kill Daniel by, by getting a decree signed that anyone that is found praying within so many days of the king wrote this order out and it's signed and it cannot be revoked. Uh, and they go and they discover that Daniel was still using his prayer language. He was still doing his prayer life. But the one thing that they didn't count on, they didn't count on that he would expose them to his prayers. You know how he would expose them to his prayers? He would open his window up every time he prayed inside of his home or inside of his closet. And he would turn his face toward Jerusalem. And because they were held captive, he turned his face toward Jerusalem where the temple was and he prayed and he asked God to deliver his people from the hands of the enemy that they would go back to worshiping him in the temple. And if he would get them back to the temple, that's where they would find themselves. And Daniel said, Lord, if I forget Jerusalem, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. In other words, I have nothing else to talk about in my prayer life that if I don't talk about my life with you. And the Bible said when they knew that the decree was signed, they came and they found Daniel praying and they threw Daniel in the lion's den. And the king didn't want to, but he had signed a decree that he had to. And when he threw him in the lion's den, what they did not count on, his enemies did not count on, is that the lion of Judah was in the lion's den. The king of king of all lions. The lion of Judah was there. Spoke to the other lions. This is a praying man. And he did not have to worry about a thing all night long. And God didn't have to prove anything to the king. He didn't have to prove anything to his enemies. He didn't have to prove anything to anything but the lions. And you got to know when you praying and you got lions in your life, there are some people, when you pray, that lions just can't eat. When you're praying, 
there's some things that take out everybody else. The Bible said that those enemies became enemies. And the enemies were thrown in the lion's den and the lions eat enemies. <laughs> so that's where I'm going to stop. Keep your windows open. Keep praying. Keep looking to God and he will strengthen you. I'm out of time, but I'm not out of message. I love you and may God's peace be with you. I want to see you tonight at Broadway Church of Christ at 630 here in Lubbock, Texas. We're going to have a great time in God. Father, in Jesus' name, may your peace be upon your people. Cause our, your face to shine on us and give us joy that we might know you personally. And as we walk with you, shine your light on us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.